Hello, my name's Chris. What's yours? Welcome to Marathon Man, which is where I marathon different film franchises, TV shows, and other bodies of work that I have a huge fondness for. The first one to kick off is going to be Doctor Who. And I'll be taking a look at every single televised Doctor Who story in chronological order from the beginning, with a few pauses in between seasons to recap. So join me from the very beginning. There'll be shocks. <gasps> no way is he going to bang that paving slab. There'll be laughs. <laughs> Browser history. And there'll be tears. <laughs> he is going to bang that paving slab. Okay, so those aren't clips of what's to come. I've, I made that specifically for this video. I mean, I've seen it all before. It's not a reaction thing. That's probably not. I shouldn't have done that. Because this isn't my first Doctor Who marathon. I've been a Doctor Who fan now for over 30 years. Strictly speaking, I'm a child of the wilderness years. I was born in the mid 80s. And just as I was falling in love with the show in its final season on air, it was cruelly snatched away. But that meant I had all of the classic series to go back to while it was off air. It was almost as if Doctor Who was pausing to catch its breath so that I could catch up. And I don't know if other people are my age, but being a Doctor Who fan at that time, at that age, it was a very isolating experience. I religiously watched and re-watched the 30th anniversary documentary 30 Years in the TARDIS, pouring over tantalising clips from stories that looked so exciting, but which I had never ever seen. Because that documentary and all the various repeats and VHS releases throughout the 90s weren't just valuable treats for long-standing fans lamenting the loss of their favourite show, but also absolutely crucial in ensnaring a few new fans while the show wasn't around and nurturing their burgeoning devotion to it. As I was one of the very few kids at school that didn't forget about Doctor Who as the century went down, it became obvious that fans of my generation were, at the time, very few and far between. Nevertheless, despite being over 30 years older now, my love for Doctor Who hasn't dwindled. Not ever since a half memory where I watched a Dalek spaceship land in a Shoreditch school playground in 1988 and my tiny four year old brain with little clue as to how television worked thought it was a live stream from the primary school down the end of my road that I was due to start at after Christmas. I didn't know how TV worked. But it being taken off at the end of the following season just as I was embracing it was an opportunity for me to fully explore the show's extensive past and just fall into it more deeply and being bowled over by the sheer inventiveness of it. The central conceit of Doctor Who isn't just wonderfully imaginative, though it is. It is also packed full of unique eccentricities and quirks and an incredible amount of heart which all combine to make something uniquely endearing and endearingly unique. A lot of stuff can feel similar to other things, and while there have been vague sort of copycats along the way, Doctor Who is the only thing that feels like Doctor Who. Most TV shows can only dream of still going 60 years later, and of imprinting themselves on popular culture the way that Doctor Who has. It may have been considered a joke in its tougher times, and let's face it, still is by certain quarters. But everybody knows what the TARDIS looks like, everybody knows what a Dalek is. Thinking about it in those terms, it's no wonder there was no keeping it down. At the time though, I thought it was never coming back. And like I said before, I think there's a fairly unique quirk to being a fan my age. And that is that while I spent most of my childhood versing myself in Doctor Who and immersing myself in it, I didn't have an online existence, it was pre-internet. So I never engaged with other fans because I didn't have the means to. So then I grew up and as with the rest of the world, moved on without Doctor Who. But then it pulled off one more miracle. As I hit my 20s and began walking down that cynical road to adulthood, what I thought was always impossible actually happened. Doctor Who came back. Which meant that that cynicism never fully consumed me. Sure, it has without doubt got its hooks in me and anybody watching this that knows me personally will be disagreeing very much with that. I'm about 90% cynicism, but I said fully, I said fully. Thing is, for roughly three quarters of an hour, on certain weekends, for roughly the last 20 years, I'm still that kid who had his mind blown by the Dalek spaceship landing in 1988 who sat himself down in front of the TV on a Friday with his chippy tea, enthralled with every episode of the 1992 repeat season, and who was drawing Doctor Who in his school books way past the time any other kid in his class was doing the same. Having loved the show for this long, I've seen every single Doctor Who story in isolation several times, but I happen to think that the best way of experiencing Doctor Who is from the very beginning all the way through, as one ongoing narrative. There is just so much more to notice and appreciate. I've done that two times before. At allegedly pace. It's a marathon after all, it's not a sprint. No one ever says they're doing a Doctor Who sprint. But both times, because Doctor Who now exists again as present tense, both times the finishing line has changed. And I've never known what the finishing line will be when I've started. The first time it was the time of the Doctor. The second time I think was... Spyfall? It might even have been the woman who fell to earth. 
Either way, the finishing line changes. So now the time is right to start again. Doctor Who from the very beginning. And because Doctor Who has those time travel capabilities in real life, able to transport you back to being the child you were when you first watched it, or whichever bubble of time you happen to be in when you first experienced the story, I have a nostalgic feeling for pretty much every stretch of it. Even the missing episodes. Now, we all know that not every episode exists in the archives. And if you didn't, sorry to break it to you, not every episode of Doctor Who exists anymore. More recently, fully fledged animations have been combined with audio recordings made by prescient fans of the original broadcast at the time to best recreate those missing episodes. For an excellent outline on this, check out brilliant Josh Schneers' brilliant video about this and give them a subscribe, it's well worth it. But before those super snazzy animations and Web of Fear Part 3, we have reconstructions made from production stills and telesnaps. Now, these have a reputation for some people as being a bit of a marathon killer. Some people understandably finding it hard to focus on mostly static images with a ticker tape descriptor for any visual cues. But for me, they are just as much of my Doctor Who experience as anything else. I first filled those gaps in my Doctor Who viewing while working on the road and sitting in the middle of the night at 24 hour coffee shops waiting for early morning trains. And even though it was the middle of the night and I was tired and I was sleep deprived, I was enthralled by watching these missing episode reconstructions. Therefore, I always find myself actively looking forward to watching them rather than dreading them. And even bits of Doctor Who that I don't like still stir up some memory or feeling. Put simply, I love all of Doctor Who, even the bits I don't like. My opinions always seem to change with every marathon anyway, so I never begin one taking anything for granted. Each one so far has managed to throw up several surprises. So which of my long-held opinions are going to change this time? Why don't more people realise how brilliant Peter Davison is? Well, Time Lash isn't as bad as I remember. I think it's sweet that he bangs that paving slab, actually. Basically, I can't wait to get started. I'll be doing a video for each story, beginning with unearthly... I'll be doing a video for each story, beginning with an unearthly child and working through to whatever the most recent one happens to be at the time. And I don't know what that's going to be, but this is the challenge I'm setting myself. Uh, I hope. Basically, if Shutigawa is not still the Doctor by the time I get to the most recent episode, something will have gone seriously wrong somewhere. Maybe then I could just continue to cover each new Doctor Who episode subsequently and just add it to the end of this marathon. Also, after each season, I'll be doing recap videos, taking stock of the most recent run of stories, where we are with the characters, and working out what my favourite aspects have been so far. Likewise, after each Doctor, I'll post a short retrospective as well, looking at what unique qualities each actor brought to the role, as well as using the opportunity to take a quick look at each Doctor's representation in expanded media, such as novels, comic books, and big finish audio plays. It's a long old journey, and I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope that you enjoy taking it with me as well. We might not agree on everything, and that's fine. Doctor Who is such a broad church by this point that there's not a single person out there who will agree 100% with everything I say. But as long as everyone's polite about it and no one's a dick, I won't need to be a dick either. So if you're up for the journey as well, join in, in the comments, hit the thumbs up, tap the subscribe, clang the cloister bell so you don't miss the next installment, and I'll see you back here very soon for an unearthly child.